Hello, everyone. It's Priscilla Farrell. I'm president of Friends of Animals, um, which is an international animal advocacy group. One early meeting with Tom Reagan occurred at the New Generation for Animal Rights Conference, organized in, in part by the Culture and Animals Foundation from July 29th through August 1st, 1993 at Rutgers University. The conference marked the unofficial baptism of a new generation for animal rights along with bold philosophical discussions about the abolitionist goals that define the animal rights movement. I was invited to speak at various sessions and recall hearing the word justice associated with animal advocacy work, perhaps for the first time. Three years earlier, Friends of Animals signed the Declaration of the Rights of Animals along with dozens of other groups. And the conference put the declaration into motion, offering it philosophical underpinnings. In the mid-1990s, Tom said that sexist, naked campaigns were a symptom of what happens when activists don't comprehend the philosophy that guides our movement. And as a feminist, that thought certainly resonated with me. One of Tom's statements, I'll quote, there is a natural alliance between being for animal rights and being for the rights of any member of an identifiably and historically oppressed group, end of quotes, inspired me because of the intelligence it offered, the opportunity to connect dots and improve culture. If you're working for justice, you likely know that it's participating in a movement that transforms others. Initially, people get together to talk about problems, their anguish, and what they believe about rights. These gatherings are the rocket fuel for movement building, and they allow people to figure things out. Movements allow problems to be collective, and they provide support companionship. They give people a reason to struggle and hope. Movements have to grow to remake a society, and we can change the world for animals if we don't make a practice of tearing each other down. Tom didn't belittle activists who were finding their voice, but he offered hope by contributing to a vibrant vegan advocacy movement. For that, I'm forever grateful. The last time I saw both Tom and Nancy was in North Carolina during a book tour of my first vegan cookbook, Dining with Friends, The Art of North American Vegan Cuisine. That was just 10 years ago. Many thanks to Tom from all of us at Friends of Animals for offering us arguments and opportunities to hammer out what's morally justifiable at all. Animal rights activists make an unequivocal point. Cows, birds, and other animals should not be bred into existence to be treated as food. That remarkably clear idea sets the stage for vibrant work that dares to change the world. Hi, this is Gene Bauer, president and co-founder of Farm Sanctuary. I recall meeting Tom and Nancy in the mid-1980s and was moved by their firm adherence to an animal rights philosophy that was also tempered by patience and maturity and a commitment to nonviolence. I've embraced their tenets and have also come to increasingly appreciate the importance of culture as a key influence on human beings perceive and relate to other animals. Tom and Nancy recognized the sway of culture and belief systems including spiritual traditions, decades ago when they founded the Culture in Animals Foundation. They played a major role in shaping animal rights discourse and advancing our cause, and their work will inform and inspire us for generations to come. Pamela Rice, read by Kelsey Adolphs. The Viva Veggie Society and Veggie Pride Parade NYC came up on the radar several times for the Culture in Animals Foundation. 
They found us and were very generous, and we didn't even ask. The work of the Viva Veggie Society began in 1991, when the first edition of 101 Reasons Why I'm a Vegetarian appeared on New York City streets. I, as the leader of the group, along with fellow vegan activists, used the persuasive pamphlet for years to aid in the group's many creative public outreach endeavors. Soon, Viva Veggie began publishing its own magazine, The Viva Vine, which stayed in circulation until 2001. In 1999, the group opened the Veggie Center of NYC, which only closed in 2015. Perhaps the group's crowning achievement was the launch in 2008 of the annual Veggie Pride Parade NYC, which ends in a festive celebration with dozens of exhibits and onstage presentations in Union Square Park. Hey, Tom, California calling. Eric Mills here, Coordinator of Action for Animals in Oakland, what's left of it. So it's come to this, old friend. Seems only yesterday that Esquire magazine crowned you the guru of animal rights. That was back when I began addressing you and your lovely and long-suffering wife, Nancy, the brains of the outfit, as everybody knows, as the guru and guru, American royalty, as it were. Not many people know this, but Action for Animals helped put old Professor Reagan on the animal rights map early in his career. Desperate for sp speaking engagements in the early 1980s, per my request, Tom agreed to speak at the University of California Berkeley campus, where former Governor Ronald Reagan famously tear-gassed the student body and yours truly back in the mid-60s. Hoping to draw a larger audience, I posted flyers all over campus advertising the appearance of Nancy Reagan. I thought they would get the students' attention. Did not go quite as planned. Tom has groused for years that that was the low point of his career, the smallest audience he had ever had spoken to, barely enough for a soccer team. Quality, though, or maybe not. Memory fails like most everything else these days. So get back to the West Coast, Tom, and we'll try it again. You still the man. Henry Salt, Peter Singer, Bernie Rowland, Steve Saponsis, who needs them? Heartfelt thanks for all that you've done for animals over the years, non-human and human alike. You've made a major difference, and it's greatly appreciated, along with your friendship. Much love to you and Miss Nancy, Tom. May the force be with you. See you on the other side and stay me an aisle seat. In the interim, as Wendell Berry says, be cheerful even after considering all the facts. In the 1980s, I remember how vigorously Tom spoke in favor of absolute animal rights at conferences all over the country including at the triangle events he organized, which were real firsts of their time. His words and his writing woke people up from their slumber and gave them a base upon which to lay the foundation of their newly found beliefs about animals' place in society. It was a pivotal time of awakening, of philosophical discourse on animal matters. And from Colorado to the Carolinas, Courses were emerging, many based on Tom's work. They challenged conventional thought of animals as property, unworthy of consideration. Tom will go down in history as a cornerstone of that animal rights building to which each bricklayer adds, until one day it will be unmissable and indestructible. Hi, Tom and Nancy. This is Jean Hollowell. I wanted to tell you that you will never know the tens of thousands of lives you have forever changed through your logical and compassionate, rational call to lead an ethical life. Not only have you changed those many lives, but you have also positively changed the lives of the generations who follow them. Although you may not hear from them, please allow me to speak for them. And what they would say is, Tom, you have been a bold and compelling voice for the voiceless. You have confronted every major socioeconomic force that supports our current world lifestyle, from agribusiness to the meat, pork, and dairy industry to medical experimentation, fashion, and entertainment. Wherever an abuse of an animal takes place, your voice 
your presence, your steadfast logic is there, calling, yes, begging us to return to humanity because you know that animal rights are human rights. You have marched, you have debated, you have written scores of books, you've created films, you've tabled, you have done all there is to create a new humanity, and you have never blinked, you have never faltered, you have never wavered. The steadfastness you have shown is a reflection of your character. Tom, you have been a shining example of how to live one's life. You are a beacon in a dark world of despair. And you have done this with love and compassion. Your words echo in my mind every time I explain why I do not eat animals. Jean, I hear you say, you have to love people into this movement. And love you have. You've done more for the rights of animals than any other single human being. I adore you as a friend and a stellar example of how to navigate this world. But hey, your life has also included a lot of fun, and I got to be a part of some of that, like trips to Asheville, North Carolina, and the beach, and Hilton Head, South Carolina and whitewater rafting in West Virginia, where Nancy entertained us by wearing her wetsuit inside out. (laughs) And all the lovely and gracious dinner parties you hosted with delicious food and stellar conversation. We've had a lot of laughs and fun, too. And so may I close by saying that Gandhi said, let your life be your message. And so, Tom, you have. Your voice, your power, your impact lives on. With all my blessings and love, Jean. This is Susan Barella. I attended the Culture and Animals Foundation annual conference with Tom Reagan for many years. Fortunately for me, I live in North Carolina and was able to travel easily to the event. Many attending traveled long distances and like myself, would be there faithfully each October. Along with the long-time attendees would be new and often much younger people, a mix of diverse people all joining to educate themselves and share information was invigorating and always enlightening. This was all possible in large part because of Tom. Aside from arranging the logistics of this conference, he was in essence the conference itself. He had the ability to relate to and bring out the best in us all. He understood and was open to those whose opinions and activism could be quite contrary and never shied away from controversy. Most importantly, this was a venue that exposed me and many others to these ideas. Invariably, my favorite part of the conference would be Tom's closing remarks. In addition to being an outstanding speaker, he was adept at reinforcing the philosophy of kindness. This is how I most fondly remember Tom. Brilliant and witty, but most of all kind. Sue Leary, President, American Anti-Vivisection Society, read by Emily Laverie Skull. In the early 1980s, as a grassroots activist for animal rights, I heard of Tom Reagan, He energized the animal rights movement at the time. My friends and I recognized his brilliance and identified with his compassion. He spoke for us and we are inspired and proud. Over the years, whenever I heard him speak, his message rang true and hit home. In 1995, when I was elected president of the American Anti-Vivisection Society, I called Tom seeking his advice. He was so patient. He helped me work through the types of campaigns we might pursue in order to be true to our abolitionist principles, while still being pragmatic enough to get something done that would be of value for the animals. He famously bridged theory and practice all through his career. I admired that and respected him tremendously. I finally had the opportunity to attend a Culture and Animal Foundation conference and meet Nancy. I recognized that these conferences and the CAF programs were movement building in such meaningful and unique way supporting arts and scholarship and activism. 
The conferences brought together such diverse people and had an atmosphere of intelligence and commitment. I had conversations at those conferences that I'll never forget. I met so many wonderful, dedicated people, and always Nancy and Tom were so welcoming and gracious and fun. In 2008, AAVS was making plans to celebrate our 125th anniversary. We embarked on a project to make a little film about who we are and our history, which we felt would be a way to view the history of animal protection in the U.S. The film crew flew down to North Carolina to interview Tom, and he had such great insight, but also great warmth. His words frame our film, putting it all in perspective. And for our anniversary gala, I had no doubt who I wanted to be the keynote speaker, Tom, of course. Tom and Nancy came to Philadelphia, and he gave a wonderful speech. It inspired everyone to be their best as animal advocates. He kindly allowed us to reprint it in our AV magazine. It was a real privilege to host Tom and Nancy here in Philadelphia and enjoy their company. And, being the friendly people that they are, I think they enjoy their time with all the wonderful friends and colleagues who came to share the event. We have had a few other visits over the years, and I treasure those memories. I will continue to look to them as a model in how to persevere for the animals and push boundaries, finding inventive ways to encourage people. I just think the world of Tom and Nancy. It's been such a pleasure knowing them, and I congratulate them on their life's work. 35 years of the Culture and Animals Foundation. So here are some other small pieces read by Martin Rowe. This is Richard Ryder, the sociologist and coiner of the word speciesism. Tom's contribution has been fantastic and international ever since he got the animal rights bug in Oxford way back in 1972, I think. He is, by the purest and strictest criteria, the leading proponent of the rights position as regards all non-human animals. Some others of us use other concepts such as liberation or speciesism, but if you ever need a defense of animal rights itself, he is the ultimate and most formidable authority. Beware those who challenge the master. Thank God for his good work, and may it long continue. From his old friend, Richard. And Geoffrey Masson, author of When Elephants Weep and other books, writes, Sometimes a single idea and a single line of literature can change the world. I believe that Tom Reagan wrote that line, and invoked that idea when he wrote about, and I paraphrase here so that people can make this idea their own, the fact that all animals have a biography. They are all the major players in the drama that is their life. This made just about everyone who thinks about such matters sit up and pay attention. Suffering could not be confined to one species, our own. This opened up the idea that some animals may suffer agony far greater than human agony because they were born to be killed. This was a stroke of genius in getting humans to open their hearts to the possibility that we are not alone in our capacity to experience deep feelings and that other animals may even be our superiors. We owe this idea to one man, Tom Reagan, and I am honoured to be his friend and his intellectual student. I could not have written the books I have written without the ideas of Tom Reagan. I love him. Evelyn Pluhar Adams, philosopher and author of Beyond Prejudice, writes, My text is very simple. Tom, you are my hero. Love to you and Nancy. Carolyn Bailey of ARZone.net writes, Tom Reagan has made an unparalleled contribution to the animal rights movement and has had and is still having a positive impact on many lives. I've long been very appreciative of Tom's work and was over the moon to speak with him and Nancy on the phone and in interviews for AR Zone a few times. Not only has Tom made an enormous contribution to the movement with his books, his papers and his videos, but the way in which he relates to other humans, vegans and non-vegans alike through patience and gentle persuasion rather than aggression and arrogance, and the respect he shows to all around him is something that ought to be an example to all of us. He is the epitome of class, dignity, and grace. And my wish is that a new generation of animal rights advocates become acquainted with both the work of this wonderful man and the humble way he relates to other humans. 
Finally, Larry Brown and Sherry Beck of Tip City, Ohio, write, Tom and Nancy Reagan have been personal heroes since I, Larry, first met them. Their passion, friendship, philosophy and activism inspired me in my own efforts. I first met the Reagans when Tom invited me down from Ohio to share a program of original songs with the Triangle Vegetarian Society around 1985. I have never forgotten the gracious reception that Sherry and I received from Tom and Nancy, and indeed from other members of the society. To meet such icons of the movement so welcoming and down-to-earth was wonderfully refreshing to us. Shortly thereafter, Tom encouraged the recording of my songs and awarded a CAF grant to make that possible. In 1988, thanks to Tom and Nancy, I was able to record Counter Revolution, one of the first animal rights grassroots, in quotes, albums, and one in which humour was used to address these serious issues. From this project, I gained added confidence, which resulted in the writing of several animal-related songs for the popular Swiss group Daniela Mules and Band. These songs, which addressed furs, factory farming and vegetarianism, were performed in a number of European countries by Daniela and her band. Some of my very favourite memories, though, are ones spending time with Tom and Nancy at their home, along with other activists on nights before the main CAF events took place. I can still see Tom in his easy chair relaxing and smiling, legs stretched out, and Nancy making everyone feel comfortable as we sang and talked excitedly together. It was always an honour to be in the presence of the Reagans, and I never fail to wonder how I could be so fortunate. Later, Tom's groundbreaking video, We Are All Noah, enabled me to more effectively lead discussions with fellow Christians, which is the area of most passion for me. At Tom and Nancy's, I even had the privilege of meeting the Reverend Andrew Lindsay and Reverend John Bowker, who appeared in the video, and who were inspirational. Were it within my power, Tom and Nancy Reagan would have already been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, for surely they are legitimate candidates. My wish, too, would have been to have had Dr. Tom Reagan as one of my professors. The balanced lives of Tom and Nancy Reagan, where concern for both humans and animals was united, is impressive to me, and I love them for that. With all our love and affection for two truly lovely people.